morning and welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago. Well, the iCare project, a national recycling initiative. The Environmental Management Authority is rolling out phase two of the iCare project, which I mentioned before is a recycling initiative funded by the Green Fund. To tell us more, we have the Communication, Education and Public Awareness Officer of the EME iCare project, Nadia Rada. And also joining us is the president of Cashew Gardens Community Council, Ms. Rosalind George. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just want to just first tell the country, Trinidad and Tobago, a special good morning, and to my team as well. It's such a privilege to be here. Um, so our reason for coming out this morning is to increase awareness about the eye care project. It is a national recycling initiative that is managed under the EME, and we are seeking to build the capacity of, of our citizenry for recycling by establishing the infrastructure necessary to support it, as well as building the capacity for our citizens for recycling. Okay, so how does this recycling project work exactly, and how is Swimical involved in this process, Miss George? Well, Miss George is the she's engaged at the community level. Okay. She would have established a project um, in her community to engage the residents there to participate in recycling. And Sunkal would have been one of the entities who would have supported the project as well as the EME via the eye care project. So she can tell you a bit more about that. <laughs> of course. We have had quite a bit of support. The recycling project was not our initial project. Our initial project was actually water quality testing in the Kapara River. So our young people were trained to get into the river, take samples, mix the chemicals, and this project was done for WASA and the adopt -a river program. However, in doing so, we discovered that there were quite a bit of solid waste pollution in the river. So on World Rivers Day, we did a massive cleanup, but we couldn't stop there. The residents had to take the responsibility to sort their waste more responsibly so that a lot of these plastics does not get into the water supply because it's actually contaminating our water. And so out of this, we engage the services of the EMA and Swim Call because Cashew Gardens is quite ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> we undertook this project, and when we started collecting the bottle, then we decided, okay, what are we going to do with it? And this is when we ask EMA to assist. And so they send transport every month when we collect and send it to Swim Call so that it could be processed right. and disposed of more responsibly. And so... What Cashew Gardens has done, this is the type of relationship uh, that we wish to establish with communities as we move forward in seeking to roll out this national recycling initiative. Because we don't just want to place the infrastructure in the form of recycling bins into the community and it is not well um, utilized, etc. We want persons to understand why they are doing it. Because a lot of times we have people asking, well, what is it? What is there in it for me in terms of what is the, you know, economic component for them? And it's so much more than that. And granted, too, that we do not necessarily have, like, all the recyclables that are collected, um, with the exception of glass, recyclables don't yet have a value in Trinidad and Tobago. So we want people to appreciate that beyond the economic component, there is the need for them to understand that when you inappropriately dispose of your waste, it comes back to you. We were just speaking about mm -hmm. it coming back to you in your food source because Definitely. most of these um, materials, when they're uh, um, disposed of in the environment, they are persistently organic pollutants that you know, end up coming back to us in, in the food chain. So we end up eating it in the fish and different things that we eat. So we want people to understand, do it for your health. Do it for you know, the environmental um, Aesthetics, do it for the creatures in the sea, which children tend to um, love. They like turtles, etc. We need them to appreciate that it's much more than just the money, because currently, even though the material is being processed via um, our beverage container facility that is managed by Swim Call, the sale of those recyclables does not sustain the operational cost currently. So there is this is being incubated. We are growing a national system and we're hoping for it to be sustained in the long term when this project should end and we hand over, hand over the, the studies, Swim Call Authority. Now, Ms. George, how have you been able to get residents on board to be part of this, especially with them asking, what's in it for me? Well, actually, we found it was quite easy in Cashew Gardens because people want to recycle. 
but the facilities were not readily available. I think we need to make it a little easier for residents to participate in this activity. So we had meetings, community meetings, and one of the key components of our success is the kids, because it's a culture shift. It's easy for us to just put the garbage out. But when you talk about sorting and separating and putting things in different places, really we have to talk to the children and get them to make the change, and this is where it all happened for us. So after that community meeting, we have also had great support from our corporation, and I want to give homage to the chairman, <laughs> Henry Awang, of the Kuva Tabaki Tapa Region Corporation, and also our council of Vishal Mohammed, who have embraced the project and has supported us all the way. So when the garbage comes into our community to collect, they know not to mess with the bottles, <laughs> because this is not to go into the landfill. And so our, our community immediately, what we have also done is we counted every single bottle over a three-month period just to have some sort of data on what our community, our very small community, is generating. And in three months, we had 30,000 plastic bottles removed from the environment, which to me is a success yes. in itself. <laughs> our program has been going on for almost two years now, and the momentum has not changed. We have seen more and more recyclables being collected and more residents are getting involved. And so our next move is to engage the other communities around the Cashew Gardens so that eventually the entire country should understand that this is important to all of us. Certainly. Mm -hmm. And with um, this project, the I Care project, one of the objectives is to expand recycling into schools. And one of our goals is to implement recycling in each, of this, in each school in Trinidad and Tobago. It's a goal, but you know, we're hoping to achieve that in partnership with NGOs and CBUs that are already engaged in recycling. All right. Well, <laughs> closing comments. What would you like to tell those looking on and communities looking on would like to be part of this? Or oh. why should they be part of this? <laughs> well, we would like them to be part of this because I always like to say the environment does not need us to survive. It is we that need it to survive. And we need to look at how we dispose of our waste because it is a resource and we want to invite the nation to participate in this national recycling initiative because the more we do it, the likelihood is that we will begin to um, develop a green economy in Trinidad and Tobago with the right partnerships, et cetera. So we want to encourage the citizenry to embrace recycling and to come on board. <laughs> Is there a number that we can call to reach you or any information website? I certainly they can call 6450933 or visit our Facebook page I care TT. All right, thank you so much. My pleasure. All right, so we take a short break and we return with much more. Stay tuned. We continue our conversation here this morning on the IK Project, a national recycling initiative. Joining us on set, well, we introduce Ms. Nadia Rado, who's the Communication, Education, and Public Awareness Officer. And joining us now is the CEO of SwimCal, Ronald Roach. Welcome. Thank you very much. So we'd like to hear about this strategic partnership that you have right now. How is this working out? Right. So EMA would have uh, been involved in the setup of the IKEA bins and that material that is collected from those bins and from the uh, Cashew Gardens project and also from the Tunapuna pilot project that we have ongoing. Those materials come to SwimCall. We have two facilities, one at Kwanapu and another one at Namdevko in sea lots and we process those materials. Uh, the materials that are received are beverage containers so they comprise PET bottles, uh, aluminum cans, tetra pack, and glass bottles, and it's our job to sort. Of course, uh, there is some contamination coming. People don't do yeah. uh, as expected, so you get uh, chicken and chips boxes, mm -hmm. you get um, other types of contamination, and our job is to sort, uh, process, and have those materials exported. All right, and Ms. Rada, how, how do you feel about this partnership so far? And when did you all actually make this arrangement? Okay, well, the project was initiated in 2015. Um, the iCare project is I actually a precursor to the beverage container recycling um, project, which saw the collection of waste from the environment as well as the establishment of five um, or three of five collection depots, which would be strategically managed by Swim Call. So funding from the Green Fund would have gone into establishing these facilities, and this was done through the, 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 the project itself. And so in the long term, um, via when the recycling authority is established, 
these resources would eventually be handed over onto, onto SwimCall. So the relationship is very strategic. We have uh, um, two more um, pilot collection depots to establish, mm -hmm. one of which would be in Tobago, certainly um, we, we intend to expand into, into Tobago. Um, we've been having a lot of questions about that, but the, the, the equipment is needed, like for baler, et cetera, to, to reduce the material of the volume of material so we can transport it to the facilities that are managed by SwimCall. And how many uh, pilot collection depots that you all currently have? Well, there, there are currently three. Mm -hmm. One at um, Namdefco in Sealots, the other one at the Guanapo landfill, and all are operated by um, SwimCall, and the last is at Forest, Forest Park. Park. Okay. As well. uh, Mr. Roach, in terms of the future projection, what plans do you have? What vision do you have for this project? Right. So government has mandated that we fulfill the duties of a recycling authority, and uh, therefore we have to get much more involved in recycling. So what we are doing now, it's just beverage containers, and they just represent a fraction of the actual material that can be recycled. recycled. We generate about, as a country, 700,000 tons of waste on an annual basis, and it's estimated that 70% of that can be recycled. Uh, and uh, our objective is to continue the recycling process to include more materials, so things like paper and cardboard, uh, um, different types of plastic, and uh, composting using food and organic waste. Those are part of, uh, of our plans, but of course the public has to get involved. You know, I'm very thankful to the volunteers right now. Every single beverage container that we receive right now is through voluntary efforts, and um, we must congratulate the people that are involved, um, but we will also like to appeal to uh, additional people to get involved, be part of the program, and to encourage others uh, to be part of the program. Right now we are operating our, our facility at about a quarter of its capacity, and therefore there's a lot more um, efforts that people need to make to get involved in the existing recycling program. When it relates to our culture, would you say, and you said the public has to get involved, yes. are we the responsive type? Well, for the most part, um, it takes education. Mm -hmm. and, and there are lots of people, people generally want to recycle, but they don't always have the means. And hence why this project is important in terms of expanding our collection network. Currently, the IK project has 80 collection bins. And we want to engage in mass education and awareness um, activity so that people will come on board, know where their bins are located, and participate in recycling. So there are 80 collection bins? There are currently 80 Where, collection where are some bins. of the areas that, that they are? Well, they are in um, Chagornas. We have some up in Santa Cruz, within Port of Spain. Um, environs. So it's spread throughout the entire country? Fairly. Okay. The, only, the only areas that we really don't have any collection bin would be in Tobago and uh, like more like what, what, what about schools and communities? Well, schools, as I said before, we want to establish recycling in all, in, in all schools. We currently only have 12 recycling bins in schools okay. currently. So schools are being targeted. So schools are being targeted. Mm -hmm. It will be one of the first areas that we roll out the recycling. And uh, that's part of our partnership as well. So whereas EMA is responsible and they will get involved in the setup of the bins at the schools, we are doing public education at the schools right now. So we are encouraging students uh, to uh, engage in recycling and be part of this recycling program. All and right. this will also be extan expanded with the participation of NGOs because this is one of our um, strategic approaches is to engage in partnerships with as many stakeholders as possible. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Roach and Ms. Rada. Definitely a pleasure. Welcome.